All right, everyone, wash and talk. Uh, first thing I'll mention, uh, the giveaway is in full swing. How many days do we have? We have like 13 days left, something like that. Uh, open house this weekend. I haven't done a lot of promoting of this, so uh, can we do this video today, have this up today for today's video? This is like a great, like we have like 10 videos. Like, <laughs> this is good, this is good. So when I do these vlogs, it helps us out on, on the channel. But um, E92 is uh, uh, suspension sorted. Uh, wheels have been rebalanced. They've been coated. We have the wheel studs. I think you guys will like the um, What are we gonna call that video the, the one where we just do just audio because I didn't feel like talking for once in my life Where we put the wheel studs on kind of cool. So anyway, th this car is pretty well cleaned up I took it to BMW invasion. Uh, we've, we've been wiping it down too much I don't I just feel like the car is never really as clean as I'd like it to be when you just do the the waterless wash thing. So I want to do a full wash. Uh, we have the open house this weekend, Saturday, 10 to two. Uh, so I want it to be clean. I'm going to put it under cover. Uh, I'm going to vacuum the interior because it got some dust and crap in it from sitting in the field at the BMW Invasion. Um, but the very last thing I'm going to do to this car is uh, is we're going to do like a, a jewel if jeweling up of it. So I'm going to do so next perfect finish which, uh, so I'll do a decon, perfect finish. It's not really ready for that. Like if, it, if I was keeping the car, I'd probably wait another six or eight months before I did that, maybe even a year. Um, but I think it's just to kind of clean the car up and get it set up for the, the next you know, recipient, the owner. We're gonna do the drawing. Have we set a date on the drawing yet? So we'll do the drawing a few days after after that ends on the 15th. We have lots and lots of entries, which is awesome. So thank you for that. Um, but your odds are still good, but we have we have tons of entries, and so we want to make sure we compile that all properly and get that all all set up. But so I'm going to do a quick wash here today. The wheels aren't particularly dirty. Adam LZ took it for a drive, and David Patterson from that dude in blue took it for a drive. Uh, other than that. Eh. Yeah, they're not super dirty. Let's just do a quick, we'll do a quick full wash of the car and I'll just wipe the wheels down at the end of the process. I'm telling you, when you do an N914 wash, you know, just doing a waterless, or I guess it'd be a rinseless wash with a bucket of water. I just never, it never feels as clean to me. You don't get like the wheel wells and all that stuff all blown out. Like just this step here, cleaning out the wheel wells and the insides of the barrels of the wheels and the brakes and all that to me is, feels so much more satisfying. Now we just replaced the resin, so I got some fresh CR canisters. The water in this building, the city water in Lady Lake is actually really bad. And that extra 15 minutes of me being late, I'm planning on doing this at 9.45, I got hung up with my tree guy. Um, removing some trees because the sun's going to get me. But the nice thing for today is I can pull the car in because we clean out the warehouse. Been working on that all week. Gosh, this car is dialed in, man. My carbon ceramic should be here soon for my, should have an update here this week on the, those coming for my 800 mile car. Got my Gore-Tex shoes on. They're ugly as crap, but hopefully they, they don't get wet. All right, let's foam it. Do a quick, easy wash here today. Ooh, Jeff got me some warm water in there. Should foam up real nice. Gotta wash a lot of cars. Today's Wednesday. I gotta wash all the cars by the weekend. Did you guys see those jacks? Oh, ooh, so good. That pit boss thing. Oh my gosh. You gotta. You wait till you people see this thing. Man, is it good. It's almost as good as me not having to work the camera right now. <laughs> Makes my walk experience much more enjoyable.
So remember, when you're dealing with sun like this, you know, if you're unfortunate, like most of us, where we gotta wash it out in the, in the open, the pH, you're better off having the pH neutral soap dry on the surface than having the, you know, having just regular water. Now I have spotless water, so I've got deionized water, but you've got to, um, you want to keep the soap on the surface before, you know, you don't, you don't want just regular water, non-treated non, uh, water to dry on the surface. We should be safe now because again, we, Mike and I changed, or Mike changed the resin filters yesterday and um, or changed out the resin and it looked pretty nasty. Man, I can't tell you how good it feels to have my darn warehouse cleaned up. Feel almost, it'll feel almost as good as having all of the cars clean. So this car will be leaving. The RS left. The Tesla's for sale. And everybody keeps messaging me. <laughs> so help me out here. Does this make sense? So I've got the cleanest, nicest cars of anybody. And you know the story of the car. And so everybody keeps messaging me because they want to buy my Tesla for cheap. Like, why would I sell my car like well below market value when my car's nicer than any other car you're going to get? So people keep messaging me like, oh man, that's a lot. You're asking a lot. I'm asking like what everybody else is asking for their Teslas or what they're selling for. So it's just a weird, <laughs> like you would think. I, I would pay extra for one of my cars because they know it's been taken care of versus, you know, most Tesla owners don't have a freaking clue what they're doing with their car. It's their first ever like nice car. And so I wouldn't want to buy a Tesla from a, from a first time, you know, first time nice car owner. I'd want to buy it from somebody who knows what they're freaking doing. So anyway, the Tesla's going to get taken apart and um, sold. I'm going to take the wheels and brakes and suspension and all that stuff off the Tesla. And then the GT4, I'll probably sell the GT4 a little later because I do, I do want a 997 RS. And so we'll rock the, uh, the 800 mile E92. We'll roll the, the E36 M3 for a while. We'll go out in search of a 997. I might even be patient and just wait. wait for uh see what happens with prices on cars in general make some money for once in my life on cars to help help offset and repent for my car stupidity over the last couple of decades of my life i think uh i'd like to sit down and add it up you know between the giveaways and you know, and then if these you know last few cars, if I make a few bucks on them, not lose as much as I normally do at least, I'd like to see where I'm at. You know, just giving myself a rough estimate lifetime. You know, where am I at with cars? You know, how much, how much money am I in the hole? Because I think the ultimate goal of every car guy is to get to the point to where. You're getting every new Ferrari that comes out and you get to sell it back to the dealer at a, at a profit and you end up owning cars and making money off of them. I mean, being a non-dealer guy, you know, non-flipper, it's kind of like houses, you know, I, I'm not a house flipper. I'm not a house improver generally. I build the house, put the house together the way I want and then ultimately I end up losing money doing that. But I think, I think there's like a, there's a, uh, a point where you reach, you kind of get, if, if you develop an expertise around cars or you end up in the right place, right time, or I think you can, you can end up being net 
positive if you buy the right kind of cars at the right time. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to have to think about that. I just want it to happen naturally, which is very unlikely. It's kind of like you want to be, I want to be a good investor, but not actually spend any time develop any, developing any expertise around investing. So who knows? I'm probably destined to never retire because, uh, because of cars. <laughs> One could argue that cars have been a net result of my, at least some percentage of my personal success, if you will. So you can make an argument that, at least that's the argument I make to Michelle all the time is, well, you know, if I didn't have these cars, I wouldn't have Obsessed Garage, so I wouldn't be able to do all the stuff we're doing. I don't know how valid that argument actually is, though. Could I have, could I have had just an E92 M3 and had the same amount of following and success in business had I just had a E92? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. And I could have just polished other people's cars and made videos on that. Who knows? I guess it doesn't really matter. Just remember when you're washing, even though the car is pretty clean, don't do giant areas. It's the reason why we have two buckets. Certainly, if you're gonna do a single bucket method, Manage the areas that you're covering with your pad before you, before you swap the pad out. That's how everybody does one bucket method. They say, well, shoot, it's better you never revisit the bucket and introduce the dirt back from the bucket. But the problem with that is you need like 15 pads to do it. Wash pads. So what we'll do here is we'll do a really quick surface cleaning of the tire, wheels and tires. This is the cheater method. Just throw that in there. So I'm not gonna use, I'm just gonna use brake buster on the tires, knock out the tires really fast. Just because I like to uh, kind of condition the You know, I just cleaned, rebalanced, and um, and redressed the tires. And so I find that the second or third application of your tire dressing is always the best. And so I just want to do a little brake buster. I don't want to strip all the tire dressing off, but I do want at least condition if it condition it if you will by adding another layer on a fresh initial coat of tire dressing so because my wheels aren't super dirty I don't need to like revisit the bucket and or re or spray off my stuff I can do a pretty clean touch up to the wheels here just this way so that took me about half the amount of time that normally takes me to do a wheel. So remember, I'm trying to beat the sun here. My days of driving this sucker are done. It's worth too much money now. I do have to fix the because these seats don't have the airbags, we have to do a, a little bit of coding, coding for my friend Alex at Alpine MSS. I'll contact him probably next week, get that knocked out. And then this puppy is ready for the next owner. Maybe I'll get lucky and someone from the Southeast will win again and I don't have to ship it to like British Columbia, but it could go anywhere. I'm gonna have to figure out how to get it to the person. You know, I could always be convinced, too, to buy it back from you. <laughs> so whoever wins the car, you have an invitation to uh, sell it to me. I don't 
don't know how much. We can negotiate that. 50 grand. Done, see, nice and quick. But I am gonna take my time and go in and dry it. Dry it well, clean the interior up. And just do a quick little exhaust clean up. That's a warm and quick wash, about as quick as I get. Feels good having the wheels coated again. Yeah, the coating had failed, and so it makes washing the wheels not nearly as enjoyable. Only I ever did that door jam. But, the car's not really that dirty. All right, let's pull it in. We'll blow it off and dry it. Oh yeah, quick little interior cleanup. That'll be good. Yeah. All right, let's dry this sucker off. All right. Takes forever, but it's better to take forever and do it that way. These freaking sweatshirts, zip up hoodie, whatever you want to call it, are amazing. Gosh, it's so good. Probably will be the last time I get to wear it for 12 months or so. All right, need some drying aid. Towel. So we'll be getting all the washing stuff over on the other side here, but we're kind of in this in-between phase of in between this side of the garage and the other side, the yarn building. This will probably be the last wash I do over here. But the pressure washer's still on the wall, so that's why I've gotta kinda work off the ground. But I got all my cabinets. So I finally completed the cabinet array over in the yarn building. And so I took the microfiber cabinet that's been over here forever out of here. Yeah, drying inside is so much better. And I, I think what I'm gonna do at the, um, at the new interim house, I think I'm gonna have to wash inside because uh, there's just no, there's no east-west blocking like this building. You know, we have the you old know, west is there, east is here. And so we have this whole time until the sun gets overhead you know, we have until about 11 a.m. or we still have quite a bit of shade. But at my house, and I had that at Harbor Hills as well, the last interim house, where we had lots of room for, for like, lots of time for shade. But I don't have that anymore here at the, at the, um, at the new interim house. And this drying aid is so much different than bead maker, we just don't need a lot. I need to freshen up the coating on the rubber here. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's the way to go. Do one last little dial in for the, the giveaway owner. I get to make the videos then as well. Spend one last little, little weekend session with my, with my love here. I've said this a lot, but this, this car, you know, giving away this car is very different than the others. The others were like experimental cars to see if there was something I would really like, the 1M and the M5. This is my car. The others were never really my car. They were just to check the box. 
So, you know, if you want to enter a chance to win, go to obsessedgarage.com, click on the banner image, or you can click on the link in the description here. It'll take you right to obsessedgarage.com, right to the giveaway page. Take a few minutes and read what it says, and it'll tell you what you need to buy. You can buy apparel, detailing, things that don't count are like cabinets and pressure washers. You know, we just, we have to select some things that count toward the giveaway. And so let's say you were gonna buy a bottle of GSF, the soap that I used to clean this here today. Uh, we have like a 10 to $20 premium on the products, which basically there's a raffle ticket attached to the product that allows you to, every five bucks you spend counts. So it's not the premium that counts, it's every $5 counts toward, toward you know, the giveaway. And so then you get entries and then someone who bought $10,000 worth of stuff could win or somebody who bought one t-shirt could win or one air freshener could win. You know, and let's be honest here, the whole purpose of me doing this is to help pay for it, you know. I can't really sell these cars, the modified cars like this, because it's not, you know, the the amount of money I spent on the car is nowhere near what the car is worth. You know, it's worth, you know, I spent a lot more money than the car is worth. But because of the giveaway, we can sell a bunch of things, we can, you know, create a bunch of buzz, you know, have a bunch of people, you know, participate, and it helps me do these if you want to call this a build this bolt-on project and helps me you know finance the whole deal this one we're going to make some money on which is great i made a little bit of money on all the giveaways which is hard to quantify because of all the time and energy and money we spent shoot we bought a new camera for this giveaway so it's probably not all that profitable yeah, I mean, the car is still in good condition here from a, from a, you know, it's starting to get a little contamination. Like I said, I would let, I would wait a little longer before I detailed it, but I think I'm going to detail it anyway. Got some water etching and stuff in the top and the coating that we'll want to pull off, freshen up. So I'll, I'll probably just do it. We'll see if we can get it done. I'm telling you this freaking drying aid is so good. Drying aid counts. But I wouldn't suggest, you know, like we all made this mistake and bought gallons and gallons of bead maker for our, you know, for, you know, for my own washing. And then I'm like, well, shoot. I ended up with five gallons of bead makers sitting around and I found a product that I like better. So, I would suggest you slow roll it because who knows, who knows how long it'll be before I find another one that I like better. Yeah, it's clean. I'll show you the car cover that I like for this. I'll put it on. It's a Cover King Satin Stretch. It's an indoor only car cover, but it's pollen season. And so even in this building, if we open the door a couple of times, it'll be all covered in pollen. And pollen is one of those things, like if you see pollen under a microscope, it looks like a darn, you know, it looks like a bunch of Chinese stars bolted together, scratch crazy. So you want to avoid any kind of dry wiping of pollen, even though it looks like you could just wipe it right off because you're gonna scratch the crap out of your car. It's beautiful, two towels and we're done. Don't need a bunch of towels, this method. Having this bulk, bulk, bulk small drying towel and then following with the orange. And then I can go ahead and knock out all the jams as well. So we have a little drying aid on the door jams. Should hit up Alex today and see if we can do the coating. It's funny, we didn't have any PCs at all here and Bryce and I would have to like go borrow something or you have to bring like an old surface or something to try to get to connect. Now we got a bunch of guys using PCs so we can just go grab one. 
and the laptops. The jam is done. I might actually clean an interior on camera for you today since we're flying through this. Show that I do clean interiors sometimes. It's so funny watching all these dudes on YouTube do these disaster details. They spend all day and I would never do I'd, I'd, I'd throw the darn car away. There's no way I would do that. More, God bless them. That is such a brutal brutal thing to go and clean up some puked up minivan. No way. But it gets the views though. That's how you get them. I can't even watch one of those videos for more than 30 seconds. It's terrible. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Door jam. Oh shoot, just put my greasy forehead. Just touch the darn thing. Don't do that. Let's see the engine bay. Wipe the wheels off. We figured out what was wrong with the E36. It was the hood latch. We took the whole dash apart, took the whole thing apart. And it turns out it's the little hood. Yeah. That's why the alarm, that's why it wouldn't lock. There is no, I don't know, for whatever reason, my 96 doesn't have. No, no. We thought maybe it dropped down behind, so we took the glove box out, took the whole thing apart. What the heck is going on with all these leaves? It's that stupid oak tree right outside. C92 has this little thingy. Freaking thousand leaves in here. I clean this thing out every single time. You probably parked my car right out underneath the oak trees yesterday, this weekend when they were, Tommy was messing around in the, in the garage. There's nothing better. This is why I don't get a supercharger because of that. I just love the look of the, the plenum. I got, oh my gosh. Yeah. New rule. Anybody parks my car outside, you gotta clean the frickin' oak leaves by hand. So I don't park under trees. Yeah. to say I don't like that kind of stuff in my door jams I like it like that clean till this car leaves my possession it's mine and that means I want it clean so hey Matt I see you're selling your Tesla I'd like to give you a 62,000 for it with all the parts on it uh, I know. I know that every, everyone on Auto Trades is just like $80,000, but I'd like to give you 60. Do a quick little vacuum. Get you some bonus footage. You never see me do wash and talk and do the interior, ever. Never. I'm gonna eat cheeseburgers in the car. Let me get my little stool. I'm gonna make a new rule. If you send me an email, you want to buy something from me, just say I'll take it. You tell me what you're, hey, I'll give you 68 for it. I'm not freaking negotiating. So, you give up that dream. I always price everything aggressively, cheaply, aggressively. People are just throwing it out there to see if I'll give it to them for free. I guess they think that I'm just, you know, I, I still think people think I have like a $32 million bank account or something like that. It's 
So you send me an email, hey, I want to buy your Tesla. I'm in it. 71. I don't really want the parts or I do. Just tell me what you want. Don't throw out this random hoping I'm going to say, oh, you know what? You know what, Chris? Why don't you just take it? You can just have it. Free. You got to work here if you want that. Drives me crazy. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna start washing in the uh, in the garage at the new interim house. Be a good little test. I'm gonna get some of this uh, Truscore plastic wall stuff. Try that out. See if I like it. I can't tell what it's gonna look like in bulk on the wall. If it's gonna look cheesy, if it's gonna look fine. I'm not sure. Some people are freaking out. You're using the same tile on the wheels that you use on the on the paint. Well, I'm gonna wash the towel, so we'll be fine. So I just spritz a little drying aid on here and gives it a little extra layer of something, something or other. I'm gonna do a quick little tire dressing. Yeah, see, when you, so like I did Stoner's Terminator to the tires, even though these tires weren't brand new, I pulled the, pulled the wheels off the car, I um, iron removed, so I used iron remover, which I wasn't squat on here. Um, I didn't polish the wheels, but the, you know, the coating was pretty much toast. Uh, but I used iron remover, I um, cleaned them up really well with some brake buster, then I use Stoner's Terminator on the tires to kind of strip the tires and prepare the tires for a new dressing. Then I coated the wheels with Deluxe, topped with Gliss from Carpro. Then I dressed the tires heavily. So I put a heavy layer of OG tire dressing on and the car sat for a little while. I added another layer of it. And then what we just did there with Brake Busters, we kind of cleaned off the superficial top layer and uh, but we didn't totally strip the tires like we would if we use something like stoners or the like i have a bottle of uh shine supply wise guy over there that's pretty um strong concentration and uh so now i just basically just kind of cleaned off the surface level of the skin of the tire and so now the tires are good to go they're good to just maintain with tire dressing i gotta go get my brush but they're good to maintain and just keep up. I will be right back. I don't know, it's kind of soft. Should I ruin it? Let's try it. This is my normal brush. Yeah, let's see. I mean, it's not, not the right kind of bristles, but let's see if this becomes, ooh, I think this could be a winner. Dude, that took me like a tenth the amount of time. Just go a little spritzeroo on there. Watch this. Yeah. I bet you this would work better on truck tires too. It almost needs to be a tiny bit stiffer, but maybe this softness helps me get I'm good at detailing. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Don't kid all Ben on shit. It's just a hunch I had. I think this is for like interior cleaning and stuff, not for tire dressing install, but I always like to repurpose things. Find a, a, a use for something that wasn't intended. Much more ergonomic on my hands. It, I can get the little lip here too, and I can largely keep it off the surface of the wheel. It's like, I would still be on the, on the, I'd be just starting the second wheel now and I'm about to finish. And the layer of coverage I'm getting is really good. All right, bros. That's legit.
Okay, I don't know if these are available yet, but I want them. We'll get these. First thing, I need to clean the windshield from all the uh, suction cups we had on here from all the GoPro stuff. Oh, now my little clean, reach and clean tool over here. And I don't feel like going to get it. So that's the way you do it. I'm be mouth breathing here. Screen. Boom. Keys right here. Let's, um, let's do some quick vacuuming. And we're done. It's my kind of interior, we'll call this interior detail. By detail, I mean get in and out as fast as possible before you start sweating everywhere. I hate it, I hate it so much. This is a flex vacuum. It's okay. I haven't chased the vacuum path yet. I know I keep telling you I will. And I will, but I haven't yet. So for right now, I'm stuck with this one. Don't hit the car with your tire, with your hose. That's a smart move. Wipe it down. I'm done. God, I hate doing this. Why do I hate this so much? A little bit of PNS interior cleaner, but I do this often, so it takes two minutes to do. Just keep it maintained. You don't need to freaking get your interior all covered in all kinds of weird coatings and all that crap. You don't need that. You're just gonna mess it up, so don't do that. The difference between your interior and your exterior is your interior is not getting like rained on. At least it shouldn't be. That's a Mormon special right there, bros. Done. Let me grab a car cover, I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna push the car back a little bit. And we got ourselves a Clean M3. Suck her back. Looks pretty good. Man, this thing is awesome. This thing looks good. God, it looks good. That brush discovery is legit. So like I said, this is a Cover King Satin Stretch, only for indoor use, you can't use this outside. And you only cover your car when it's clean. Otherwise, don't do it, you're just gonna scratch it up. That's backwards. So always start on the mirrors. And so again, the point of this, I need to keep the pollen off the car. Keep the dust off the car over the next three or four days until the give until the uh, open house. Remember, open house is this weekend. Come on by; it's gonna be fun. The best part about it is you get to meet a bunch of people that are like you. A bunch of crazy people in the right way. Boom, clean. Looks good on a car cover, doesn't it? Anyway, I'll see you guys this weekend. For those of you who are local enough to come by and uh, go to obsessedgarage.com, buy some cool stuff and uh, get a chance to win this sucker. And uh, I'm excited, Hope the, uh, hoping somebody wins, hope it's like changes their life. You know, like this car has changed mine. So yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm excited to do the, the drawing on this in a few weeks. 
So thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. I got a bunch of detailing stuff coming up here soon. So those of you who are interested in detailing, I'm gonna detail the E36, I'm gonna detail the Raptor, uh, I'm gonna do a finished polishing on this. And uh, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Oh, we're gonna do a detailing 101 series. Uh, you'll like that. So anyway, see you soon. Thanks for watching.